What's up, Internet? It's your soul, and just had this uh, news story pop up in my feed. Bitcoin has no intrinsic value as UK moves towards crypto ban on Forbes. Well, as somebody who's been looking into money creation for quite a while and fiat currencies such as dollar and pound and so on, comparing them to cryptocurrencies, the amount of holes in this story is literally ridiculous. I don't even know where to start with it. Um, so let's just summarise what they've actually written here. Basically, they're claiming that um, the regulation of cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, um, pushed into the limelight in relation in response to Facebook's plans to launch Libra, their own kind of version of Bitcoin, which isn't really a version of Bitcoin. But anyway, um, so, you know, cryptocurrencies regularly receive nonsense claims from the establishment who are very heavily invested in fiat currencies and government control and hierarchy and so on. Uh, I've never yet heard a single um, claim made by them to denounce Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies that actually stands up to examination. And that's not me being biased. That's just the fact of the situation. Their claims do not stand up to examination. The things that uh, Donald Trump said, and, and he's really only parroting what lots of other stooges have said, you know, in the last few years, such as, Bitcoin facilitates crime and drug dealing and terrorism and so on. You know, it it's so unbelievably ignorant, really, or misleading, deliberately misleading, those kind of claims on the face of it, in the sense that, for example, A, most drug dealing, terrorism and so on, I'm sure, you know, is, is uh, powered by fiat currencies like the dollar. Um, A... And B, I've heard it said several times that law enforcers actually like Bitcoin because it actually is easy to track. It's totally transparent. All the transactions can be easily looked up by anyone. So it then becomes, you know, they, they know that these transactions are taking place. All they then need to do is track the accounts and who owns and controls them. And since it isn't that easy to put money in or out of Bitcoin directly on its own uh, without being monitored, you know, in many, many times, they're able to actually track the transaction. So, you know, that, that that's just two examples. But coming back to this story, it's this is really interesting. It, it goes off into some angles and tangents which most people maybe aren't aware of because they don't dig as deep into these things as, as I have done and a lot of the people I listen to. So, so, now the UK's financial services watchdog has warned potential investors that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have no intrinsic value with some taking the caution as a signal the country could be moving towards a Bitcoin ban. This is a small, complex and evolving market covering a broad range of activities, said Christopher Woolard, Executive Director of Strategy and Competition of the UK Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, which oversees London's huge banking industry. Today's guidance will help clarify which crypto asset activities will fall inside our reg regulatory perimeter, Woolard added, with the FCA warning, consumer should be cautious when investing in such crypto assets and should ensure they understand and can bear the risks involved with assets that have no intrinsic value. The FCA branding Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies without intrinsic value is likely to rile many Bitcoin believers who have long argued blockchain technology, which underpins Bitcoin and most other cryptocurrencies, give the digital tokens value. Well, that's a very oversimplified explanation of the situation. It's technically true that cryptocurrencies have no intrinsic value when compared to share ownership in actual companies. However, there are many examples where a marketplace bestows value on an intangible asset. John Osler of comparison site Finder.com uh, told the newspaper, for example, told Telegraph actually. For example, the brand of Bitcoin itself has value. And although its future place in society is still unclear, it's one of the most likely coins to stay the course. So this idea that Bitcoin's value is in its brand is ridiculous. It's not the value is not in the brand. Who gives a shit? It's just a word. It's a symbol. It's meaningless. Um, yeah, in comparison to other cryptocurrencies, the brand might be significant because most people recognize it, but that doesn't give it intrinsic value. Only in the context of other cryptocurrencies, which they're saying don't have intrinsic value. So it's nonsense. Nearly everything in this article is nonsense. Um, so I'm going to get into what actually is intrinsic value in a moment. The warning from the UK comes shortly after US President Donald Trump unleashed a scathing attack on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, comments that were then echoed by other senior officials in his administration, including Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin, who branded Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies a national security issue. It's thought that Trump attack, Trump's attacks on Bitcoin and crypto were in direct response to face, blah, 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 Facebook. 
It's not a ban. The UK's FCA warning is a move in that direction, said Herbert Sim, head of business development from Brocktagen Fintech Group. Right, so anyway, that's the the um, the gist of it. Um, now, what are the problems with this? Well, let's just look at, first of all, who the FCA are. Now, you would, you know, get the impression here that the FCA was some sort of government department, right? But, hmm, not so sure about that. Uh, so this is the FCA website. It used to be the FSA. And this is their piece on this subject. Um, it's only a short note. Basically echoing the same sort of thing. Um, I mean, really, they're just saying you should be cautious because it's not regulated, right? And they are the regulators of the industry in this country, apparently. Uh, so, you know, that would make sense that they would say something like that. That's not really controversial. Uh, but here's the thing about the FCA. The FCA is the conduct regulator for 59,000 financial service firms and financial markets in the UK and the prudential regulator for over 18,000 of these firms. Now, I'm not professional in that sector however i have listened to people who are and i've listened to whistleblowers from within the fca who state that the fca basically is a front group for the banks they fund the, they fund the fca they basically run the fca and when this woman and not just one woman actually but one in particular i'm thinking of i went to work there she found out very quickly that they were basically not taking any real action to do anything to regulate the uh the you know the banks basically they were just there to make people think that, that the banks were being regulated that's pretty much what she said and that's that's literally been the observation of every single person i've looked at who's looked into that subject um including bank managers you name it people who are in the industry and who suddenly woke up to what was going on down here at the bottom of the about page it says we are an independent public body funded entirely by the firms we regulate by charging them fees. We are accountable to the Treasury, which is responsible for the UK's financial system and to Parliament. So they actually literally say here that the that they themselves, the alleged regulators, are entirely funded by the banks. Hmm. Which is exactly what whistleblowers said, and they were making clear that it's not just that they fund them; it's that they basically, as a res presumably as a result of them funding them literally don't really do anything other than look out for the bank's interest. They look out for the bank's interest, not the people's interest. And I found this out when I um, had an issue with a bank and I actually phoned up the FSA, as it was at the time, uh, and other groups like it, and was really surprised to discover that they literally do nothing to protect the average person. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, an announcement from the FCA that cryptocurrencies are bad, okay? Um, you know, should be taken with a pinch of salt because they literally basically are the banks saying that. And the banks, you know, are directly threatened by cryptocurrencies. The entire banking industry is threatened by cryptocurrency. It's possible for every individual effectively to create their own bank using cryptocurrency. And there is projects, or there are projects, literally intending to do that. Uh, not just Not just you have a wallet and, you know, you can kind of act a bit like a bank. There's entire projects designed to allow anybody to literally set up a bank with all the services of a real bank using cryptocurrency. Um, so that basically means that the monopolies on banking end and, you know, the limitless money machine that these people have benefited from for a long time slowly starts to wind down. Obviously, that's not something they want. So obviously, they're going to do whatever they can, no matter how ridiculous it is, to try to slow that process down or stop it. So the core of their claim here is that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value and therefore it's dubious and, and you shouldn't really, you know, value it ultimately. Now, the word intrinsic, according to this Cambridge Dictionary website, essentially means basic to a thing being an important part of making it what it is. So they're, they're essentially saying, in a non-financial language sort of sense, that Bitcoin has no value to it inherently within it. So therefore it's valueless. Well, the fact that people are trading it for $20,000 a Bitcoin would suggest otherwise, really, wouldn't it? But let's have a look at, you know, a more financial oriented definition. Now, I'm not saying this is the best possible website. I'm not a financial specialist. I'm sure there's 10, 100,000 websites that are more uh, respected than this one. I just randomly pulled out of a search. But I just found this explanation interesting because it's kind of in alignment with my understanding of the situation. Definition of intrinsic value in financial terms refers to the underlying value of an asset such as a stock product or currency. It's determined through fundamental analysis of that asset and not with reference to, it mar to its market value. Fair enough. So they're basically saying the thing itself has to have some kind of 
um, utility or uh, quality that gives it a value beyond just the fact that people are trading it. Okay, fair enough. It is, of course, possible to argue over what intrinsic value actually means, whether even gold has intrinsic value, um, how value should be defined, and so on, whether it's just whether it exists outside of consciousness. Um, so, yeah, I get all of that. And, you know, it goes into some of the details here. Uh, you know, you can say gold basically has an, uh, a value in terms of it has a use in terms of electronics and other things you can do with, with gold. It's useful. But here's the core of the issue, right? Basically, the fiat currency, such as the US dollar and pound and euro and so on, do they actually have an intrinsic value? They are ultimately just numbers and bits of paper. They're really not that different from Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. It's just that the format of them is different and who controls them is different. What's the intrinsic value of a £10 note? I mean, unless people are accepting it for, for payment for things, basically it has no use. I can't even wipe my ass on it. it. It doesn't have any use at all. So in here on this page, they say that, that the intrinsic value of uh, a fiat currency tends to be that it's classed as legal tender and therefore is valid to, to, to be used for paying for taxes. And if you don't pay your taxes, you get violently put in a cage. So basically they're saying the, the intrinsic value of, of a fiat currency is it's used to protect you from the violence of a government. Which is hardly much of an intrinsic value, is it? And it's artificial anyway. It's not something that's automatically there as a result of the... Um, it's, not, it's not a requirement of money or of, of basically paper currencies for it to be legal tender. They could accept Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies for payment for taxes. And as I understand it, there was a push to have that Done. I think it might have actually been done in one or two states in America already, uh, and in some other countries. I think India possibly, uh, maybe Japan as well. So, what is this magical intrinsic value that's missing from Bitcoin? And you know what this piece from Forbes basically says is that they 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 quote this guy saying that the technological aspects of um, of Bitcoin itself basically give it a value. What they don't mention is that it's Bitcoin specifically is has rarity built into it. It's useful for obviously for uh, you know many cryptocurrencies like Steam and other ones are almost immediate transfers of value. Um, they're useful as a competitor to fiat currencies in that they are decentralized. The decentralization gives them their value, and I guess that's what they're talking about. They don't spell it out conveniently in this story about the blockchain aspects of it. They don't really make the case for cryptocurrency. And that's the repeating pattern that happens whenever anyone tries to poo-poo cryptocurrency in the mainstream media or governments. They never really actually reveal the true value or usefulness of it. The fact that a blockchain system means that anybody can run their own currency and work together with other people around the world, outside really of regulation and oversight and control from governments, that's a powerful thing. And it doesn't automatically imply any wrongdoing. It's just a powerful thing. And they don't like that, basically, is what it comes down to, because they want to control everything. And they're, they're trying to abuse their position. They always have been, and most people who know about politics know that. Um, it's just that they, you know, it's getting more and more difficult for them to obscure the fact that they're doing that um, and get away with it. So they have to come up with these weaker and weaker arguments against things which weaken their position. Uh, so take Steam, for example, uh, the, the cryptocurrency Steam. You could, in theory, use if, if all shops accepted that, or let's say a, a, um, a, a system was installed, like WorldPay used a system which accepted cryptocurrency in general, which may well happen in the near future. You could pay for everything in Steam, and Steam has no transaction costs. Uh, it takes three seconds to do a transfer, so basically it's immediate, and it has no downsides really from that perspective. I mean, there are there are downsides in terms of it's a social networking system. It pays out the rewards. There's inflation part of it, but you could easily create a version of Steam that doesn't have those rewards within it. So you've got all the benefits of it just as a pure currency. And the usefulness of that is significant. To be able to send money globally for free is useful. And if basically what I'm trying to say is there is no real way to say that cryptocurrency has no intrinsic value unless you also accept that fiat currency also has no intrinsic value beyond the fact that it's accepted as payment for taxes and so therefore you need it in order to not get put in jail. Now, that's not much of an argument to use fiat currencies, is it? <laughs> uh, and strangely, they don't mention that in here. Now, on top of that, you know, people might say that it's the lack of backing in the currency that means there's no intrinsic value. 
So people might talk about gold and say, well, as I said, gold gold has value um, in terms of its usefulness, its conductivity, and so on. So it has an intrinsic value. Um, what backs fiat currencies? Well, as we're pointing to with the taxation here, you know, it used to be backed by gold, silver, other things, meaning that if you had a certain number of dollars, you could take them into the right place and exchange them for gold, theoretically, uh, as an inherent part of the system. You had to. It was by law. But that doesn't exist anymore. And if you look at the history of the US dollar, what the governments have tried to kind of quietly back the dollar with has changed over time. Nixon tried to do with oil and natural resources, uh, actual land um, rights, as I understand it, um, kind of using the government's own land as collateral on, on the dollar. Uh, and then pretty much nowadays, it seems to be violence. You know, it's pretty much backed by the American military's ability to go and cause mayhem and steal resources. And so effectively, it's just a, a token of mafia type gang activity on a global level. So yeah, hardly a good thing and definitely not backed up by anything you can go and exchange your dollars for directly like we used to have with gold. So on the face of it, basically you've got a government monopoly system with their own currency threatening you with violence if you don't go along with it and claiming that that system is better and safer and more reliable than cryptocurrency which has no coercion, no violence, no one telling you what to do, and it, basically it's completely free, and yet offers you the same benefits, with the slight difference that it is dependent on technology mostly, and doesn't have usually a paper version. Although there are paper versions, but they're not quite as practical. But it could do. So, yeah, the whole argument against cryptocurrency here is so ridiculous that I can only, as usual with these things, where it comes down to, are the people talking about this stuff ignorant and stupid? Or are they deliberately trying to mislead you? And given the seriousness of the subject and the amount of power and money involved, I can't really give them the benefit of doubt on this and say they're just stupid or didn't bother doing their research. I think it's more likely that um, they are actually trying to manipulate public perception, uh, keep cryptocurrency down to, so that they can maintain power as much as possible. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, Pretty nasty, messed up situation, in my opinion, and just more fuel for motivating people to actually get into cryptocurrencies and leave the fiat system behind. You might say, oh, well, well cryptocurrencies are uh, unstable and we don't know who runs them and so on. Well, no, you do know who runs them. You run them because anybody can run them. And yeah, I don't know who owns the most Bitcoin, but I don't need to because I can just create my own token. And it basically creates a marketplace for money that's fair and equitable and that everyone can access rather than having this top-down controlled um, system where you get these so-called elite people that basically own nearly everything controlling it telling you what to do that's not how we should be living we should not be living under total control and domination so it's a terrible terrible crime against humanity that these people go around saying they're fighting to keep us all free and the dollar is the symbol of freedom and all this stuff it's the one of the most backwards things i've ever heard in my life um, and I just want more people to look into that and dig into it. There's so much material on this, so many documentaries. You can find a lot of them on eureka.org, ureka.org, which is my website, social network. If you search for money and the catalysts, find the money catalyst, you'll see a long list of documentaries that really go deeply into the process of money creation and the level of crime and misleading information that there is around that subject. Um, briefly, if we just go back to the FCA, just forgot to mention, if we look at the bottom here, company number. So the so-called FCA authority is actually a company. It's a private company as far as I understand it. Um, you know, I, again, I'm not, I'm not a specialist in these matters. Maybe there is a specific form of company that's different to the average company that you or I might create to trade with, but it doesn't look much like a government department to me. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, just thought I'd mention all of that and uh, definitely look forward to reading your comments on that. Hopefully we can... Uh, <laughs> get people a bit more enlightened about this subject and not have such ridiculous stories being pushed on people. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you like this post, up, upvote, do reblog, re-steam, share on, and uh, until next time, peace.